Hello guys, my name is Vijay Kumar Vaka. I am working as Senior Solution Consultant in FS0. In this session, let us discuss about uh, MuleSoft interview questions and uh, MCQs uh, part 3. I'll share the link of this uh, Google form in, in the description of this video. So if you want to just attempt the test, you can uh, access that link and attempt the test. So now let's go ahead with, uh, uh, with the attempt of this uh, particular test. Okay, so let me uh, increase the font size. Yeah, the first question is uh, which statement is true for uh, VM connector? Uh, so these are the options. So here basically I was asking uh, the nature of a publish operation and the publish uh, consume operation. So basically publish is asynchronous in nature and publish consume is synchronous in nature. Okay, so that is the reason uh, we have to opt for the second option. So if you go to the Anypon Studio, uh, this publish operation, right, uh, it will just push the messages into the queue. That's it. Uh, it will not wait for any response uh, uh, from the listener, okay? But when you use publish consume, it expects, this publish consume is synchronous. It, it expects some response, okay? So that is the reason we call publish operation as asynchronous and publish consume as synchronous. Let's go to the second question that is, please identify the query params and URA parameters in the below URL. So that this is the whole uh, URL. Uh, this is the host, port, path, and, and the protocol we are using. And these are the query parameters, guys. The first name and last name are the query parameters. So how can we understand that? Okay, uh, we have a question mark here, right? So whatever that comes after this question mark, uh, we call those uh, params as query params. So we have two query params. One is first name and the second is last name. And the values are mule and buddy respectively. So now the answer sh should be, uh, there are no URA parameters here. So that's why uh, I should opt for this one, like no URA params and query parameters are first name and last name. Let's go with the third question. So this is the scenario that, okay, let's assume that you got some HTTP connectivity error here. Now, what is the default status code in the response? Okay, let's say you send some uh, the, the request to this flow from postman and what is the response code or status code in the postman? So the answer is 200. Why? Because uh, here we are getting HTTP connectivity issue. I mean, that is the assumption. And because we are getting the HTTP connectivity issue, this error handler will handle that particular error. And because it is an on error continue, what happens? Uh, uh, that will be overridden as a, as a success uh, uh, response or acknowledgement to this particular listener. So this will send the status code as 200 by default. So the question is like default status code. Uh, and the answer is 200 for this. Now, which operation from object store will retrieve all the key value pairs? So we, these are the different operations within the object store connector. Now, uh, these are the options that were given. So what store will do? Store will store a key value pair. Retrieve will only fetch the value for a given key. You have to pass a key and it will retrieve the value for that one. Retrieve all, you have to just pass the object store. Okay. And it will retrieve all the key value pairs. And here as here also, if you pass the object store, right, if you use this retrieve all keys, that means it will fetch the key, key only keys actually, not the values. So the, so the answer for this question is retrieve all. It will retrieve all the key value pairs. Now let's go with the next question. Uh, the question is, can we validate the incoming payload in RAML? If yes, with what fragment? So the answer is yes, we can validate the incoming payload to the RAML and uh, that too by using the data type. So we have a data type uh, that we call as one, one, of, one of the fragments and with the help of that we can validate, we define our custom data types and uh, by using them, right, uh, we can validate the payload. Let's go with the next question. So 
what are the default ports of HTTP and HTTPS respectively? Now the answer is 80 and 443. Okay. If you assume that these are the default ports, these are the default ports that that will be used by Cloud Hub. Public ports, okay. And these two are the private ports. So if you see here, public ports in Cloud Hub, uh, MuleSoft, okay. Uh, we could see uh, the ports are like 8081 and 8082 respectively for HTTP and for HTTPS. And private ports in Cloud Hub, uh, okay. So th that is like 1891 and 1892 for HTTP and HTTPS respectively. Now coming to this question, I have asked only uh, the, the ports, the default ports for HTTP and HTTPS. So in that case, you have to choose these two. Okay, 80 and 443. Let's go with the next question that is flow reference is synchronous. This is the statement and is it true or false? So the answer is true. If you if you use flow reference, right? Um, that means uh, that flow, I mean, it will refer the control will be uh, shifted to the child flow, right? Let's say if I use a flow reference here. So if I use the flow reference and if I point to some flow, uh, let's say this one, unless and until I get some response to uh, back from this flow to this flow reference, uh, it will not go ahead with the further uh, processors processing. So that's why we call flow reference as synchronous. So the answer is true here. Next question is, what is the exact difference between put and patch HTTP methods? So, so we have different HTTP methods and the question is all about put and patch methods only and the difference between them. The answer is this one. Uh, patch will partially update the resource and put will update the resource completely. So if, if you see this, uh, this option as well, patch will partially update the resource and put will update the resource completely. This is also correct, but not uh, complete. It's not a complete difference. The complete difference is this one. Patch will update partially update the resource and put will update the resource completely. If there is no resource right to update, it will create the resource. So this is also something you have to tell as a difference. Okay. So this is the right answer. Now choose the right output based on the below input and DW script. Maybe uh, you're not able to see this. So let me show the same thing here. Let's uh, let's discuss about this input and the DW script. So here I have given two key value pairs. The keys are like message and message and the values are like hello world and hello world exclamation mark. Okay. Now based upon this code, right? We are distinct. I mean, we are doing, uh, we are performing distinct by. That means uh, it will filter the duplicate key value pairs. So that's the reason we have key and value as the parameters for distinct by function. Now here, what I'm doing, I'm performing this distinct by based upon the value. Now, if you compare these two values, hello world and hello world exclamation mark. So that means there is a difference, right? We have exclamation, exclamation mark in extra here. So that is the reason we got two key value pairs. Again, the same input has become uh, the output. Now, if I change it to key, that means, uh, I mean, we'll only see one out, one key value pair in the output because the keys are same here, right? The keys are same. So there is no uh, difference between these two keys. So that's why, um, uh, what do you say? Because we are, we are looking for the distinct by keys, distinct keys. So because there is no difference, it is only taking the first one and that is what we could see in the output. Now for, for the for our question, right? Uh, it will give the same um, input as the output. Okay, this input because we are uh, performing this distinct by based upon the value, but both the values are different. So that's why we'll see the whole input payload as the output. Now the answer for this is uh, option two. That is this one. Let's go with the last and final question. So what are the connectors that support transactions? 
so basically vm and db will support jms and vm will support the transactions but uh, we also have this option uh, which will support transactions right like all the three will support the transactions jms uh, module or connector db connector and vm connector all these three connectors will support transactions salesforce will not support transaction so this is the right answer okay so i think we have filled all the options and let me submit this click on view score uh publish consume is synchronous i think i gave the incorrect uh, answer for this but this is the right answer publish is asynchronous and publish consume is synchronous this is the right answer so let me correct that but uh, i mean this is the correct answer so i'll correct that and uh, uh, that's it from my side uh, for this session okay thank you so much for listening to my video